Hey, welcome back to the podcast. I have a special guest. His name is Oliver Sinetto, and he is from Houston, Texas, and he scaled his business from $0 all the way up to $10 million in real estate, and also he's an immigrant from Cuba. So welcome to the show, uh, Alvaro. So I actually want to know a little bit about what drives you in regards to real estate. Like, What is your purpose and on why you're doing this particular business, like real estate, like it's hard, it's grueling, but why are you doing it, man? What, what drives you outside the monetary and the materialistic aspect of it? Thank you, bro. First of all, uh, thank you so much for having me in the podcast and yeah, definitely looking forward to, uh, yeah, share my story and also learn from you and yeah, uh, give people like my point of view, my kind of my purpose behind it. So yeah. Uh -huh. Again, uh, immigrant from Cuba who came to this country like eight years ago, and now I have family, two kids. So I will say I'm doing this other than that, of course, the monetary compensation to be financially free. And I'm also doing it to prove and to show, uh, everyone that it can be done. A kid who came from Cuba with zero money. I mean, I don't know if everyone knows that Cuba is a communist country, uh, zero uh, financial education. So I came to this country with, I will say the immigrant hungry, the immigrant, mm -hmm. uh, desire to, to grow, to go ahead, not just to settle with the nine to five and yeah, to prove everyone, to prove the other immigrants mm -hmm. who are coming to the state, looking for the American dream and also for the ones that are, that are born here, right? That if an immigrant came and I'm doing the work, I'm, I'm growing in, in my business. Everyone can can do it. I think that that's yeah. what I uh, push me to do the work every day. Yeah, so your purpose proof. is just just to show other immigrants that they can do it too. Coming here with nothing, like you just wanted—that's your purpose, right? Yeah, immigrants and, and the ones that are not immigrants. Let's <laughs> see, the actual cities and the people in here, like, hey, this guy just came from another yeah. country, zero education, have to go through it total mindset process, mindset change process. So wow. we can do it too. Definitely. Okay. So when you came to this country, the United States eight years ago, what was your mindset? You didn't have, you didn't know any English, you didn't know any education and how did you end up starting like real estate? Can you take me like a, a journey on that? Like just like a quick, like five minute brief. Yeah. So I always, uh, you know, that being an entrepreneur, you, you kind of burn with that, that desire mm -hmm. to do, always do something more. But again, I had zero uh, education on that. So I came to, I'm a software, form, former software engineer and I'm a, I'm a mm. full-time investor now since 2022. Nice. But oh, I just came with the idea. I just came with the idea that let's find a nice W2 and live a good life. You know, the American dream, mm -hmm. your house, your car. I mean, just by having that, we have 99.9% 9 .9 more than, than my previous, than in Cuba, that being in Cuba. But mm -hmm. again, I always had that mindset of that growing. I think that my parents always gave me that, like work hard, do more, do more. Yeah. So I just came with that. But again, my, okay. my process was, I would go to the States, find a good job, but also inside of me was, okay, this is not, is that it? Can no. I go, can I grow more? Can I go behind that? So yes, I luckily got introduced, uh, like a week after I arrived got introduced to a network marketing business that changed completely yeah. my, my mindset on that. Okay. Did you end up sticking with that marketing, marketing networking business, or did you end up going out of that business? Uh, actually we still have the kind of the membership. We still like buying products for that, but we're not growing that <sighs> business because again, I want it always. So the business changed my mindset on, on what mm. wealthy people do. And what wealthy yeah. people do is like they read a lot, they invest in real estate. So I always, from the beginning, I was guided to that route. That's why I chose real estate over everything. Okay. So it, how long did it take you to read? Because I know you probably came here with no English background, right? Uh, I would say I had like 30, 40% uh, my English oh, because okay. again, remember, I'm a former software engineer. So mostly right. of that information, the good information, the books is are in English. Mm. I always... I knew, I don't know, remember, but I knew from, I don't know, from early age that I was destined to be here in this country, the land uh -huh. of opportunities. 
So I was yeah. reading, watching movies, everything in English. So imagine a wow. kid from Cuba with zero English uh, education. I was yeah. doing my own homework. <laughs> watching watching uh, TV uh, shows, watching that. American TV. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Mixing that with pleasure. Hey, I have to all the TV shows, everything that I was watching yeah. there, only English. Okay, that's, that's like really cool. I, yeah, I can definitely understand that because I, I feel like a lot of people that come to the United States, they want to learn the culture by watching shows and how that's how they learn English as well. So it's very interesting to kind of hear that from you and you become very successful. Uh, so let's kind of pivot here real quick. And I want to learn more about how you started from zero dollars and how you got your first deal. Like what did that look like? What did that feel like? And then what did you end up doing? Like what kind of deal was it? Okay. So my first deal was a fourplex that I bought using my FHA loan. Okay. So again, that's a principle of life. Once you speak out what you want, uh -huh. people will hear your, your, your goals, your desires, and then people will help you. And that's right. the thing. Every, Every stage of my career has a face attached to it, meaning uh -huh. that every, every time I go to a different level, it's because someone helped me doing that. Mm -hmm. In every, bro, from the beginning to now, Honest Club has a face attached to it. So my first deal was someone, I was, I was telling a friend in my W2 that I, I wanted to start investing in real estate. They saw me reading books of Kiyosaki, Kiyosaki uh, real yeah. estate books. So they told me, hey, I have a friend who is an agent who can help you buy your first property as a, on a fourplex using a UFSA. And yeah, we went, we bought it, uh, 14K, I believe, 14K only at closing. And I got oh, wow. my first fourplex. Okay. Uh, question in regards to, were you a citizen at this time to be able to use no, your FHA green, loan? Green card oh, holder. you were Only green card holder. Yes, you can buy... Uh, I believe that's for everyone. If you have, if you have green yeah. car, you can buy real estate. Wow. I mean, that's, now because awesome. we're, we're creative investors, you know, that without even yeah. papers, you can buy real estate. But at that time, yeah. exactly. I mean, to go through the regular bank process, buying with right. So you actually, you reached out. So just to make sure that I'm clear, you reached out to a realtor to utilize your FHA loan. And then you found this quadplex, this four unit property to buy utilizing your FHA and you came out of pocket only $14,000 just to control the asset to buy the, the duplex or the quadplex, right? Yes. Perfect. And when you, how did you, why did you go, why did you go to a four unit rather than a single unit? That's a good question. Remember about the education, all the books that I was reading. So yeah, you know, Saki, Grant Cardone, always the more doors, the better protection you have. I was mm -hmm. simple. If you have a single asset, one single door and that yeah. person and that property uh, is vacant for two months, you're paying two months. So you're paying full okay. amount for two months, holding cost. But if you right. have the same property, I mean, like similar property, but four doors, even yep. if you have 50% vacancy, you are still making enough money for the holding costs. Okay. It's, it's about protection, growth, for example, uh -huh. now that I have more experience, I know for sure that let's say year after year, when you go on and raise the rents a little bit to kind of match market, uh, mm -hmm. I will say in my experience, you cannot raise more than a hundred bucks on a single family home. Uh, yeah. The lease tenants will freak out. I mean, it's a big change for them, but if you have a four place and you raise the rent by 65, 75, they will all say yes. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. Because they're not raising that much, but multiplied 75 by four, right. how much is that? 300 That's great. So that's principal protection on the back yeah. end, multiple doors. You can have 50% occupancy. You're still paying your mortgage and overall growth. Uh, it's important too. Okay. So the Did you have of to make more, more doors. Gotcha. Yeah. So you can raise the rent even higher and then create your more cash flow at the end of the day and more protection. Did, when you bought this quadplex, did you have any repairs that you needed to make? Uh, yes, like around 5K, uh, 5K in repairs. Okay. But okay. I, I took and, one of my credit cards and uh, uh, yeah, we did that. Again, I only had like 12K out of, remember I 
yeah. I put down like 14k. Yeah. So I, I had only 12k saved. So I I got oh. a loan from a friend who lent me the 2k. Then I used my credit cards to buy. I mean, okay. To, to so the repairs. To repairs, right? And then, how long did it take to recuperate all your money, your investment in the property? Well, in this specific property, remember, I bought yeah. it on the market, so I bought a retail. I bought it at the yep. top of the market, and because I was reading to, that's another lesson in life. I, I thought that I was the multifamily investor. You <laughs> and you and Greg and Doug. <laughs> yeah. I, went, I also had a W two. I went and hired <laughs> a property manager right away oh. from day one. Big mistake. I didn't yeah. know about real estate. I didn't know about management, and I was paying an extra service. I didn't do my underwriting on the writing like correctly. So on mm -hmm. the basic numbers, I was kind of break, breaking even, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine hiring a problem manager on mm -hmm. top of that. So I was kind of uh, losing money or breaking even every month. I, I did that for a year. So, okay. But now, after that, I learned. So I got a mentor who told me, learn the things first, and then you can yep. delegate. So you know the, if they're doing good work or not. Mm -hmm. So long story short, I spent a year breaking even or even losing a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. But after year two that I took control of it, I started raising the rents, improving the uh, the units. And it took me like two years to recoup the 12K. But now, okay. four years yeah. later, five years later, I'm cash flowing $2,000 plus a month on that property. Net, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Net cash flow. Wow. So, so the PIPI, I, I, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. PITI is 2400 plus I pay for okay. the water and trash. is like okay. uh, between 300 to 500 So that's mm -hmm. uh, 29 mm -hmm. And my gross rent are like 5 k Okay. Yeah, you're making really good margins on that. Yeah. And when you, when you bought this property, did you actually live in it with your with your family at the time? So for FHA, you have to qualify. You have to yeah. do that, right? So I kind yep. of changed all the uh, the bills to that unit, the unit number four. Mm -hmm. And I lived there for a month. I mean, you have to live for a year. Excuse right. me. But again, I just live for a month uh, and that's it. Then I kept all okay. the water bills and I moved a family, a friend to that unit. I see. Okay. So, I then, kind of so now you follow the rules, but I, I did the right thing for get a, to get approved for the bank. Actually, sometimes, right. not every time, FHA will send an inspector just to check. Oh, like, really? Leave. Not every time. It's like right, right, right. once in a while. It's rare. It's really, really rare, right? Mm -hmm. But again, it's smart to have all the bills, everything that you personally have mm -hmm. in that property, in the unit that you're going to leave. Okay. And then walk me... So now you have this, this, you stabilize this property, you bought this property. How long did it take you to buy the next property? Oh, like six months after. Again, oh. through connections. Yes. Yeah. So through you still, you still were negative on that property. How did you come up with the other amount of money to buy your next property six months later? I know you have a, I know you have a software engineering job. Did that pay for most of the down payment or whatever amount of money that you needed? Yes, so that using, uh, remember I had the uh, side business, the network marketing business. Oh, I was yeah. literally saving every penny, not going mm -hmm. out with my family, saving every penny that I had to buy real estate. Save everything really? and invest everything. Again, that long-term mindset. I didn't want yeah. to flip. I didn't want to do anything, just buying properties and holding properties. Now it's so, different because I'm, I'm an investor, so I want to leverage like, Active uh -huh. income and cash flow and wealth, but at that time I had my W two, so I was yeah. investing every penny that I had. So I mean, at this time you only had a wife, you had a kid. What 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 kind of situation no, just, did you have? Me and my wife. Me and my wife. You and your wife, and and your wife was on board of that because I know that might be a uh, a difficult topic to talk about with your uh, with your wife or your spouse. Like you just talked about here, hey honey, this is the game plan. This is what we plan on doing. And here's the result that I'm looking to get. Is that what you talked about with your wife? Yes. Actually, I've been blessed to have like a very supportive wife. So she always, uh -huh. and also an immigrant. She came with me from Cuba. Yeah. Right? So we came, we both came from nothing. Uh, she she understood the kind of the goal. So yeah, uh -huh. she was 
Okay, with she it. was behind you the whole time. That that's like very important for people because like you can't do it by yourself. You have to do it with you know two people that understand because you're gonna have to stay disciplined. You're gonna have to suffer a little bit in order for you to do the hard things to get to make a better life for yourself and for your family. And so I I know as an immigrant, like that's what we do. That's what our culture is about. Is basically working hard today, so you're gonna work hard in the future, right? You just kind of ease off on it. Um, so okay, so. Book. So important. It, it really is. It really, really oh. is. <laughs> yeah. So your ne- your so your second property six months later. How much was the down payment? And did you use the FHA loan again, or what did you? What kind of loan no, did you use? No, I used a, a conventional loan. So I bought a property. Okay. I bought a, a single family home, but I did the ADU ADU play. So I bought a single family okay. home in a nice area. But the remember, remember, I had my my multiple doors mindset. Yep. So I couldn't buy another fourplex. So I bought a single family home yep. with a detached garage and the house had like a C-shaped structure. So uh-huh. I did a studio apartment on the main bedroom. Okay. And then the, detach, the detached garage, I converted that detached garage into another unit. And I, oh. I, was, I moved to the main house. So I was renting the main room as a studio and then the detached garage as a garage apartment. Uh-huh. So yeah, I was... I did a triplex. Wow. I basically house hacked my way to a triplex using that uh, single family. <laughs> and I moved to the main house, three bedrooms, two bathrooms. And I was, I lived for free for two years and a half, literally for free. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Huh? So how, how did that, did you go to like a government like officials to convert it into that? Or you just set a lease and just say, Hey, this is going to be a studio for this, like a rent by the room situation. Or did you have to go to like a like a permanent apartment to convert it? No, no. I, I think in Houston is we're very blessed here in this city. We <laughs> don't have to put permits for a lot of stuff. I know, for example, yeah. in Florida, even to replace a fence, you have to uh, pull permits. Wow. Again, in areas with uh, with no HOAs or with kind of HOAs that they don't care. Yeah. So you can do that. So you can create like an ADU, and uh, yeah. Also, HOAs don't like that if you're doing it in an yeah. HOA. But we did it in a way like on a super low, super low profile. Yeah. And again, we rented in the two studios apartment, the detached garage and the studio apartment. We rented, uh, we listened to friends. So we were all part of a family. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. And you don't have any issues with your friends because sometimes people rent out to their friends and they take advantage, the friends take advantage of the per- the landlord or the owner. You didn't have that issue at all? No, bro. I, I know it happens a lot. Yeah. But not in not in my case. I I think I I've been blessed with that. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. And you are so by this time you've already learned the ropes of how to manage a property from your first four unit property. So now you understand what to do, what not to do, and then from there that's why you made it more smoother. That's why you actually did it, right? Yes. I remember yeah, okay. that was like six months after. So I was I was right. still like bleeding oh, on my right. foot. But right. again, my mindset. I don't know. Was just focus on buying. It will. Yeah. It will be fine <laughs> in the future. <laughs> don't worry. Okay. Even if you lose a little bit of money, it so, will be fine. Okay. So now you have this property for the next two and a half or two years now, and you're gonna buy another one, right? So tell me about your third deal. Like, what? How did you end up coming across your third deal, and how would you finance it, and what? How much did you put down if you did any? Yes. Okay. So remember, those two properties were I bought it on the MLS on the market retail yep. price. Yeah. Again, same thing. I started talking about looking for more. How can I buy more? How can I buy more? Yeah. And again, I didn't have any money to put down, just my savings from my W2, from my side hustle, from my business. Uh-huh. So uh, by connecting with people, again, every stage of my life has a face yeah. in touch of it. So I got a lady who saw that I was hungry, looking for properties, and she introduced me to the off market type of properties. I did it at that okay. time on my second property, seven doors, seven doors, house yeah. hack and complex. Yeah. I didn't know about off market deals. All I knew was uh. Kiyosaki. And I always ask these guys buying properties. He says that he refinanced those properties and get his money out. I have no idea how he's doing that because uh, numbers don't work on the MLS. So, <laughs> and, and it's true. I was, how the hell this guy's doing that? Yeah. So again, a face that lady introduced me to, a wholesaler who was selling a property mm-hmm. off market that was new for me. 
And I told her, yeah, let's let's do it without zero skills, zero knowledge about the off market. Luckily, uh -huh. she introduced me to my Harmony Lender, now mentor friend. So she, got, I mean, the Harmony Lender guide me through the process of buying the property uh -huh. off market. That's amazing. And today is the property with the most equity uh, that I have. Again, a duplex. I had that yeah. mindset. I need to have multiple doors, right? So it was a mm -hmm. single family door with the ADU already built in the back. Mm -hmm. So okay. I bought it for like 120, uh, rehab like 25, and I did the burst strategy. Oh. And I I think I left like like 10K in the property at that, that time. Right. Mm -hmm. The property had tenants, so the tenants were okay uh -huh. in the main house, were okay kind of staying in there. So it was like smooth process. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the the harmony, the birth strategy was kind of smooth, but I didn't have the money. Again, uh, on the rehab, okay. I used my credit cards again. So leveraging all those people's money. Nice. I mean, in, that's, in okay. this case, the credit cards. So okay. that, was, and it, that was my first off-market deal. And did you, when you bird it out this time, did you uh, come up zero out of pocket? Like, did you clear your no, debts? And no, you're no, like, Again, oh. I, I, I had to... I had to put like 10K. Oh, okay. Okay, I yeah. got you. Yeah, through the Which process. is cheaper. Yes. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And with 60, 70K in equity from day one. Oh, wow. Okay. So like every single, like what I've noticed here as a pattern is like, you know, your first deal, you put the most money in the second deal, you put a little bit less from what I, mm -hmm. or you yeah, a little bit less. And then you, the third deal is a little bit less because now you're getting smarter. You're educating yourself. You're doing, you're doing the work. You're doing the action. And every single time it gets easier and easier and easier for you. I'm, 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 I'm what it sounds like, you know? Yep. All right. In the, in this, so in the, I will say in the front, in the front mm -hmm. end, yes, it was getting easier, but it wasn't getting easier for me to keep recouping the money. Again, I didn't right. have any extra, I didn't have business. So I, I always find ways. I, I was finding ways to finance that, the, that extra 10 K that extra. 12k mm -hmm. again credit cards that i don't recommend now because no one told me <laughs> how to raise capital but yeah. I, I was i was resourceful so yeah finding any money any anywhere i could at that okay. time okay so with the mindset three... of holding 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 the property yeah 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 your holding is going to pay off because you have equity in, in the third deal and like that's going to be driving you you have like 60 70 thousand dollars of equity so that kind of recuperates all of your money, but it's stuck on a property. But if you were to sell that property, you can definitely recoup all your money and then kind of uh, buy another one with it, which makes sense. Yeah. Wow. So that's three properties. Are you at $10 million now? Like how did you get the $10 million now? Like let's, let's start scaling. So now you have three. How do you get to $10 million of uh, real estate? Okay. So once I discovered the bird strategy technique, I told, oh my God, that's what Kiyosaki was talking about. <laughs> Buy a property, fix it, and then get his money out. Yeah. So I, 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 I was super excited, and I realized quickly realized that if I keep buying properties from wholesalers, so I bought like three properties after that uh, mm -hmm. from wholesalers. Again, my mentor, my harmony lender, I also realized, hey, this guy has a ton of experience, like seventy plus properties. He managed like a hundred properties, and the guy is teaching me. Because the good thing about mom and pop harmony lenders yeah. is that they have to sit with you there analyzing the deal, right? Not mm -hmm. the big ones. I mean, every harmony lenders because harmony lenders lend based on the asset, not you. That's mm -hmm. extremely good for newbies like myself at the time. So I think, huh, this guy had to sit with me for an hour analyzing the numbers. So I realized that and I... I said, I'm going to choose this guy as my mentor. So I was bringing him like three, four deals a day. Oh, wow. A day? With me a, a day. Oh, wow. Remember, not to buy the deal. Just yeah. to pick his brain mm. on the underwriting. That's why That's why one of the things that I love now on the writing deals and finding the best, uh, mm. the best way how that deal is going to work. Yeah. So I ended up, he's my mentor now. We ended up friends doing business together. So I realized, okay, if I don't want to lose money to a wholesaler, kind of now because I, I did the numbers, I was doing the numbers, the best cash on cash return on my money, I took, I paid $14,000 again from my credit card to a wholesaler to learn wholesaling. 
Yeah. Not to be a wholesaler, but to find my own deals. Yeah, okay. So after that, I did bandit science, a little bit of marketing here and there. And I moving forward, I bought like eight properties like that. So okay. off the market, negotiating with sellers and doing the burst strategy. And mm -hmm. again, using my W2 as a superpower, because again, mm -hmm. banks, they love uh, W2s to give yeah. you good rates, yeah. right? So it was super easy. I was buying the properties, those properties, and then refinance them. Refinancing them using my W2. Okay. And so all of these my... properties, were they, were they all in your name or did you put an LLC? What did you end up doing? Yes. Yes. Under my name. Because again, oh, conventional loans, they don't like, they, they'll lend on you, right? Mm -hmm. You are the guy with the W2. So yes, wasn't, they were under my name. All of it. Okay. All the 10 properties. And you, you can have 10 deals. You can have 10 loans conventional on the yeah. name. That's the kind of the, the limit. Yeah. And the banks will look at those 10, those 10 loans, 10 mortgages. That's a lot of, that's a lot of debt. Dave mm -hmm. Ramsey's like, you don't want debt, no debt, no debt. But you did the opposite of Dave Ramsey and you actually got all of the debt. <laughs> and I was, I'm presuming the fact that the reason why banks are still continuing to lend you the money is because your debt to income ratio was good, right? I thought it was improving because every time. So when the banks run your credit, they will see, oh my God, this guy has like $4 million in debt. So in, in, in loans, right? Yeah. But again, they always ask, are those rentals, rentals, giving yeah. them your uh, leases. So instead of affecting your DTI, they were improving my DTI. Because every mm. time I had a debt, PITI, I was getting rents and I was making money out of it. Right. Plus my right. W2. So, Software engineer, more than 100K a year. So super easy to qualify for conventional notes. Okay. So until my 10th property. So that's the limit. Yeah. That was the limit that I start so, looking for more ways. So, okay. So now you're at the limit of 10 properties, right? You mm -hmm. can't get any more loans from the bank. What do you do? Okay. So then you can get more loans. Now we know non-QM, I mean, non-conventional loans, DSCRs. And I started to get really bad deals from the banks on, on after my 10 property, right? 10 properties, because non-conventionals on DSCR, they're usually point a 1%, 1% and a half higher than, than conventional loans. Yeah. So I, I thought, hmm. And also remember, in all my properties, I was also always using my credit cards using mm -hmm. loans. So that's a, that's a backend that we can talk a lot of it, but I was, yeah. I was not being smart with that because I didn't knew at the time, no one told me again about how to raise capital correctly. So mm. I, was, I was using my own money. So my credit got affected below 700 and, okay. uh, I was tapped out with my conventional. So I started looking for other ways to, uh, hold properties and to buy properties. And guess right. what? If you start looking at that, you're going to see Pace Morby. <laughs> <laughs> and once you see Pace Morby, once you watch Pace Morby, you're done. Now yes. you are in love with the guy, with how much value he adds. With a, yeah. yeah, he's a, the great, I mean, one of the great leaders in the industry right now. For sure. I'm for sure. Like that. I'm a go giver. So you connect. I mean, you're like me. Yeah. That's why we're here. You quickly connect with that guy and then. It's all done. You're going to be part of some yeah, tour, gator, yeah. owners clubs. So I'm hundred percent sure. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, okay. So talk to me about today's portfolio. Are your 10 properties still in your name or is it moved out into an LLC? Like, where is it at now? Okay. So let me, so th those were 10 properties, but after that, I kept buying properties yeah. like using credit finance. I'm still, uh -huh. I'm still using uh, cash, the burst strategy, but I, okay. I learned to be creative nowadays yeah. with the rates, with insurance in Texas, they're super high taxes and insurance. I don't know if you're aware, mm -hmm. but you yep. need to be your creative or on the purchase, or you need to be creative on the back end. What I mean by mm -hmm. that is long-term rentals. They don't cash flow anymore. Single family. Yeah. So with my mindset of multi doors and exit strategies, I learned about Airbnbs. So we, we bought a bunch of Airbnb properties. We even started a management company with a partner. Then I learned section eight. That was another kind of exit strategy. 
and oh, I wow. kept buying uh, cash deals, but this time doing fourplexes. Oh. I was out hacking my way to fourplexes, doing it more professionally. If you go to my IG, mm. I have a ton of videos how I take houses yeah. uh, with two buildings and I convert those duplexes in fourplexes. Oh, wow. I, okay. I, kept buying, I kept buying cash deals by yeah. doing that, adding a lot of square footage using the garages, the ADUs. Again, mm. every, every skill that I learned in the, in the, at the beginning, I, was, I, use in, I use it now, but yeah. more, more professional. And of course, that's amazing. I'm, I'm, yeah, second. Yeah, that's amazing. And I'm now I'm buying sub twos in Texas, but sub twos they don't cash flow as a long term, all right? Mm. So I I will only hold a sub two if it's for like a co living, really nice co living, or an Airbnb. If not, yeah. I will wholesale it, or I will buy it to sell it on a wrap. Okay, so I do that's a lot awesome. of both, uh lately too. I've been doing a lot of those. Okay. All right. Well, so we're coming up on the, the, the 30 minute mark here. Um, where can people find you? Uh, is, you said IG, but what's your IG? So my IG is my first name dot last name. Uh, so Liuver, L-I-U-V-E-R dot Sanudo. S-A-N-U-D-O. Okay. I have awesome. a YouTube channel that I'm going oh, yeah. to upload this video. And I have like three videos, but I, yeah, I'm committed to start my YouTube channel. Uh, okay. this week. Well, so Olivia, what, what is your YouTube channel name? I think it's again, Liuber Sanudo. Liuber so, okay. Sanudo. Awesome. And that's my ID. I still have to come up with a name. <laughs> All right. I will need so we'll, help we'll, on that. Yeah, we'll post it in the show notes. So you can find, um, his, all his information, his kind of information in the show notes, his IG, his YouTube. Uh, and I want to say thank you so much for jumping on the show, brother. I really do appreciate you and uh, wish you the best of luck. Everything. You got to keep me posted the next time you, you buy another property, bro. Sure, bro. Thank you so much for inviting me.